Hello everyone and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today I'm going to be showing you how, how to do a maintenance on your 3D printer. Now uh, first, before we go ahead and get started on that, I want to go ahead and show you all this checklist. This is my, uh, my own made 3D printer maintenance sheet. Now up at the top we have like a date and time for the maintenance and a last maintenance date. And of course a printer name, like a unique name you want to give it, or the model, an ID if you want to give it that, number of extruders, Printer type, now uh, we got the different types, like Delta is like the row stock, I'll show a picture up there. Core XY is what my new printer is. Cartesian is what most printers are. It's where X and Y axis each have their individual motor, and of course Z does as well. And then others, just other weird types of printers that I don't have listed here. And then of course printer age or hours in service, so I'll put 600 plus. Then we have a basic maintenance section, which I'll run down here as we go throughout the video. Any break fix issues can be noted below that. And of course, a uh, question for uh, resolving the issues. Now let's talk about what kind of tools and materials we'll be needing to perform the maintenance. First off, we have our cleaning materials. I have a can of air duster and some isopropyl alcohol. And of course we have our lubricant. This is a PTFE lubricant. I'd highly recommend you use a PTFE dry lubricant rather than like WD-40 or some sort of grease because it's dry, it doesn't leave behind like grease, and of course it won't dirty up the rest of your printer. And then we have some shop towels, very essential for uh, keeping lube off the bed and other places you don't want it, like the hot end. And of course it is also good for cleaning everything down. Another thing you'll need, probably need is a good razor blade. I like this little holder because it's easy, it's ergonomic and easy to handle. And of course, a few spare razor blades just to make sure to get the uh, sharpest razor blade you can get. You might need a spatula for cleaning off your bed depending on how uh, caked up with a uh, print residue or what have you. And then of course, you'll need some digital calipers for uh, recalibrating any of the axes if of course they go untrue, which may happen. And then finally, you will need some Allen wrenches or a Phillips screwdriver, whatever type of uh, screwdriver your or whatever type of driver your screws need on the printer. Mine are just Allen for the most part. I don't think there's like a couple Phillips. So now that we have the tools and everything out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and take off these three panels so it's easier for me to show you all what needs to be done. All right, folks, so I got the sides taken off here now. So first step I need to do is I need to go ahead and clean all the debris out and dust. Grab my bin here real quick. Easy enough to do with the sides off just because I can just put it, funnel it straight into the bag here, or the bin. Try to get as much as possible and try to clear off as much dust as I can. All right, folks, now we are on to the second check mark of our maintenance checklist here. Head to uh, cut because there was actually an issue with the board, which I am going to be showing you all how to fix in another video. But first, what we're going to do here is I just want to go ahead and get a sheet. I'm going to lay that down over the bed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to spray a uh, cloth here with this PTFE lubricant. This is just to clean it here initially. I'll go over it once more with once I have everything cleaned off properly. Yeah, right now I'm just trying to get off a lot of grit from each of these uh, axis rods here. I'm gonna do both the, the, the X, Y, and the Z axis. And uh, while the printer is on, actually in general, don't move the axis back and forth, or the axis back and forth manually because we'll try not to at least if you bump them that's okay and they move a bit that no big deal but you don't want to move them manually because you can short out electronics by doing that see so far we're getting a lot of dust especially out of this uh, z lead screw that is the big thing that we need to clean up here because that's been giving me a bit of trouble been getting some z wobble recently so just scrubbing that nice and clean all right, now that we have cleaned and lubricated the actual rods and of course the lead screw, now we're gonna go ahead and test for slop and backlash on all axes. So for the Z axis, you wanna rock the bed up and down here. I already adjusted it. Basically, I just had to uh, tighten a few bolts here down here, but yeah, you just wanna kinda go up and down. This one, um, it's not perfect, but it is decent enough has a little bit of wiggle in it, but it's nothing I can really fix right now due to the way the printer is designed and of course, just some other factors as well. So just uh, gonna get it the 
to be the best I can. As for the uh, X and Y axis, just uh, fling the belts. If you can string them, if you can like strum them like a guitar string, then you're good to go. They're plenty tight. They should, you know, have a decent amount of tension. Just make sure it's not to where the axis isn't uh, going anywhere if the belt's, of course, actually moving via the motor. So as long as everything's nice and tight, but not too tight where it's binding, you're good to go. Let's see here. Let's check on our fifth item, which is inspect wiring and electronics. I did this in another video where I replaced the logic board, which is what I, pr pretty much what I had to do between uh, the last bit of video and this part here. So... That's uh, all taken care of and good to go. I had to like re-zip tie a few things as well as, you know, rewire the bed because the uh, the cords were actually catching on, or about to catch on fire, which not a good thing. Now what we have to do is we have to go ahead and clear the built up plastic from the extruder gear. So I want to actually did this a little or er, previous, um, pretty in the past month or so. So I think it should be good to go. Now what I want to do is I want to clean and true the printer bed surface. So I'm going to flip the printer on real quick. If I have it, uh, it would be important if it was plugged in. Okay, so now that our printer is powering on, I'm gonna lower the print bed. Just get it in the center position and get the x-axis out of the way. I know this, there's a few abrasions on our bed. I have this PEI surface, so I'm just gonna service it with a standard razor blade. Make sure the one I have is, eh, has a few bins in it, so I'm gonna go ahead and switch it out. So it's pretty good. Well, actually, I'm probably gonna just give it a good clean now just to make sure there's no uh, lubricant sitting on the bed. Although I did cover it pretty well while cleaning everything, but I may have slipped up at some point. Just using some rubbing alcohol for this. And then of course, next step is we're gonna tighten any loose screws. I've already done this step here off camera, but just make sure you go over any sort of screws. If you notice any of them starting to pop out or any of them that are apparently loose, go ahead and check them. Uh, especially the two most important ones on this printer at least are the ones that are holding the, ex the actual hot end assembly to the printer. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that real quick. So just two bolts holding this gonna ensure that these are actually on there tightly enough otherwise the uh, printer is not gonna function too well but yeah any sort of integral like structural screw you want to make sure is nice and tight okay so what I'm doing here now is I'm cleaning off the uh, my primary nozzle so what I'm doing is I'm preheating it it's almost to its pre its uh, prime temperature here so I'm gonna get a razor blade or an exacto knife also uh, did forget to mention that you should get a bit of acetone for this and just apply it to a rag. And of course, whenever handling acetone, make sure to uh, wear rubber gloves. Remove a bit of the crud. Otherwise, this stuff will deposit into future prints and just make unsightly little blobs of black burnt plastic. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you want to be able to get as much of like the solid bits off as possible. It may be caked in like some, just like a slight layer of just like soot. Some black areas are, are all right. I mean, of course you could go, you could go to town with the acetone, but it's not always necessary. You basically just want to get the nozzles up to temperature and just clean them out. Now this step here is entirely optional, but um, I like to do it. If you have it, it's this E-Sun uh, cleaner spool or filament type material. And it has this weird like ridge texture on it. If you're having any issues with jamming, you definitely want to run that step or run this cleaner through. It's also good whenever you're trying to switch between different types of plastics. This stuff is a lifesaver because it'll purge out anything that isn't what you're trying to go through. There's one last step we have to do here and that is leveling the 3D printer bed. Now I have detailed this in another video. I'll go ahead and put it in the top right if you want to click and check that out. Now once you do that, that's pretty much it for the maintenance here. The reason you want to level your 3D printer bed for each one of these maintenances is because things will start getting loose. Pretty, and The same goes with the uh, tightening of the screws. Is the, uh, as the printer moves, it shakes the entire printer. So things start becoming loose. So you just want to go along every once in a while, just make sure everything's tight and buttoned up nice and good. And usually the bed will become slightly uh, unlevel after a while, so always wanna keep an eye on that, especially around the maintenances. Now I'd recommend doing something like this at least uh, once a month if you use your printer regularly. And even if you use it irregularly, you may wanna do every like three or four months or so, just to keep up or just have a good upkeep on it and to make sure that of course it's running in tip top condition. 
But um, if that's my general maintenance routine. I will include this uh, sheet, this maintenance checklist in the uh, video description to download as like a Google Docs type thing, which is where I made it. And of course, uh, you can just print out as many copies as you want and use it whenever for whatever purpose, commercial, what have you. I don't care. Uh, yep, just use it to your heart's content, edit it or what have you to your own uh, doing. But that is pretty much going to be it here. Hope you all like this video here. If you did, hit that like button, consider subscribing and check out some other videos here. Should be on one of the sides and have a great day.